Hello, and welcome to part 2 of the Meme.js tutorial. Before we continue where we left off in the last video, there's something important I want to go over. So, we all know how important indenting our code is, and making sure the indentation is consistent throughout our whole team. So, here I'm going to mess up the indentation a bit and then try to run the app using grunt. Now it should give us an error. So the this ESLint program looks for inconsistencies of indentation and it will output errors whenever it finds something wrong with the indentation depending on what rules are set. In this case all of the indentations must be made with two spaces. So since it's indented three times it should have six space characters. And now spaces and tabs are different. So instead of being forced to manually type in two spaces every time you want to indent each line, there are ways to configure your editor to automatically convert your tab into the appropriate indentation. So since I'm using Sublime, I'll show you how to do that with the Sublime editor and for any other editor that you may want to use you'll have to just research that yourself so the first thing you can do is to install the editor config plugin in your sublime and after you do that and restart the mean.js generator automatically generates this editor config file for you. And there's just a few things we have to change in this file because the syntax has changed a bit. So instead of that, we have to change these rules a bit like so. This may be updated in a future generator version. And if you don't want to get editor config, another thing you can do is go to preferences here and change your settings. So we can change tab size to be 2 by default and we can also have it translate tabs to spaces for us. Set that to true and it will then automatically change all of your tabs into two space characters and that will satisfy the Lint program. Okay, now that that's figured out, let's go back to our view modules, form, views, and let's also open up our controller. Controller. So what we're going to do now is instead of having these just hard-coded values, we're going to have the 
we're going to put our values into the controller and have the view grab them from the controller. So what we're going to do first is let's create an array of post objects. So this is going to be one post. It's going to have a title some text and for the author the author is actually going to be its own object with a display name. Let's create one more post here. Okay, so now instead of these, static, values, let's go ahead and put in an ng repeat so that we can Dig through our post array. And then we'll have an ng bind. dot title post text if you still aren't familiar with the two-way data binding in angular js then I would suggest you look up a tutorial on AngularJS first. It would be very helpful. And I won't be going into much detail on that in these videos. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and see if we can run our website. refresh the page here and let's see what we have all right so now we have two posts here and yes this this data is still hard-coded in our controller but now we can add more things to the controller and before that I'm going to go back and And I'll go over a bit of how these roles work. So we had the star here at first, which means anyone can see the menu item. But 
we can change this so that only users or admins or maybe we only want admins to see it so we can edit that and when we go back we won't be able to see the link but we can still visit the the form route because we have to go and edit the route also config form route so in here to only allow users to see the form route we have to add data roles and add another array here all of the roles that are allowed to see this state and when we go back to our website and refresh it asks us to log in so let's go ahead and log in I've already created a sample user to show you but you can go ahead and create a user on your own website now after we log in it redirects us to the forum route and we can also see the link again all right so now that we've sort of drafted out our front end we can go ahead and actually work on the back end and allow us to create and save forum posts so what we're going to do first is use our mean.js generator to generate a model we're going to call this the post model and let's go ahead and open up our new post model file and also the test you can see it generated a test automatically for our model So you can see here that the generator already filled in a lot of stuff we need for our test already. If you aren't familiar with this syntax, the described lines are basically headers for all of your tests and the it lines here describe each individual test in more detail. And the before each block basically initializes all the data before each of the tests and the after each will just clean everything up so you can see there's already a pre-written test for us that just tests the basic saving functionality so now we're going to go ahead and create one more test and say it should should not be able to save if title is empty and it will look pretty much the same as the test above it except we're going to say the error should exist and we're going to set the post title to the empty string and what we're also going to do is add in some fields to our mock, mock post here so now if we go ahead and try to run our front test we should see an error because we didn't complete the model and there it is an error 
And it looks like we're going to have to continue in the next video because we're out of time. So I'll see you in part three.